Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Mr. Lashley uh, will not be here today. Uh, he will be uh, on Zoom and he, Mr. Stevens, my understanding is he'll be able to uh, participate through Zoom but not vote. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, thank you. Uh, back during the COVID period, uh, commissioners could vote by Zoom and so forth, but that changed, what, two or three months ago, I guess. That's right, in August. Correct. Thank when, you. When we came out of a state of emergency. Correct. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Lashley will not be in person. Um, okay. And, Mr. Carter, I think you volunteered to have the invocation. I did. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we just come with you this morning seeking your grace and your mercy, dear Lord. We seek for peace, peace in our world, peace in our country, peace in our state, peace in our community right here in Alamance County, dear Father. We seek for time, time to accomplish the task that you've given us. We seek for love, love among our neighbors, love that solves and provides solutions to the problems that we have to confront for our community, dear Father. And we seek wisdom, knowledge, and courage to do the right thing as we handle the business of, for the citizens of Alamance County. We ask, dear Lord, that you be with us, take us safely home from here today. And we ask all these things, dear Lord, in the powerful and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Call me in the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to all and good to see all the commissioners. Initially on our agenda, we had the uh, Sheriff's Life Saving Awards. That's been postponed uh, to the 21st, our next meeting. Um, do we have a motion as to the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, public comment. Uh, Mr. Moser, you are the guy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Boy, this is great. I don't have to follow in anybody's footsteps. Thank you for, uh, thank you, commissioners, for everything you do and the hard work that you do. Thank you. Have three quick issues I'd like to speak about: incentive guidelines, the reval that's coming up, revenue neutral, and litter on our highways. We keep hearing more about, more and more about incentives, giving out more and more money. I just want to ask the commissioners to consider. Is it time to think about restructuring our incentive guidelines? When the incentive guidelines were established, I think the unemployment maybe was like 10, 12 percent. Now it's what? Two and a half, three percent. So let's consider restructuring our guidelines. Uh, let's have our, our new county com uh, manager list all of the assets the short, that Alamance County has to offer our citizens, like our location, our new biotech center, our training center that's being built, ACC uh, campus, uh, on and on and on, our airport authority, where we are between commissioners and I think our city council, we give the airport authority, what, over a half a million dollars a year to build our airport. So we've got a great airport. Let's offer these assets to other corporations and let's, let's do away with incentives. Let's just offer our assets and we'll make it easier on you commissioners as far as decisions that have to be made. Reval. 
many people in the in the county are concerned about the rebound and what's going to happen, what's going to happen to our property tax rate. Just like to ask our commissioners this morning if it's possible to really dis discuss revenue neutral and what your feelings are about revenue neutral. Litter on the highway. I know we've had other gentlemen talk about the litter. What are we doing to clean it up? Uh, Unway to church yesterday morning out on Maple Avenue, there's a bag of litter on the highway. I should have stopped and picked it up then. I'm going back after the meeting. If it's still there, I'm going to pick it up. What can we start doing more towards cleaning up litter in Alamance County? Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Excuse me, sir. If I might mention one other thing I did forget. Unemployment, we're having trouble getting employees at the DDS. We don't we can't get employees for our sheriff's department. Let's quit giving money to corporations to take employees away from our departments. Let's let's do that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Need a motion to open the public hearing on the uh, values of uh, of presentation and I assume uh, Mr. Atkins is if you'll come forward. Motion to open the uh, public hearing. Second. Okay, let's, let's hear from you before we vote on it but we already have a motion and a second. All right. Well, yes and, and I haven't had uh, any feedback in the last couple of weeks. I uh, don't know if there's anybody here that might want to speak and share. And the, the goal today is to hear from the public, to hear concerns. We may have answers, we may not have answers, um, but the adoption would be at the next meeting. So if there is something that comes up that, that we need to look in and study, we want to have that time to study it and then bring it back to you at the next meeting to make sure we're giving informed answers and really giving everyone a chance to, to have the concern seriously considered, not just a, a quick passing listen, but a deep consideration. And we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Next meeting is November 21, mm -hmm. by the way. That's right. And that is our next Monday evening mm -hmm. meeting. Okay, we already have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. We are now in a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jeremy, we'll just get you to kind of bow down or sit down. Step aside somewhere. <laughs> You're a large presence. <laughs> Uh, is is there anyone on this side of the room that would like to address this matter? Yes, sir. And I'll come back to you, sir. All right. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. My name is Henry Vines. I live at uh, 3450 Isaac Drive in Snow Camp. First of all, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for you know for your service that you've given the county and continue to give the county. Uh, I want to come before you today and uh, about supporting this uh, revalve and the schedule of values that's set. First of all, I would like to thank Jeremy for his excellent job in his presentation that he gave last commissioner's meeting. I think that he has hit this thing dead on the head uh, by going in the middle. It might be right where we need to be, or it even could be. Uh, just a little bit under value. I don't think it will fall under uh, value because I don't think the con I don't think housing market is going to drop that much over the next year. Um, the second thing, um, by the way, I I'm on the board of equalization as well, so I know what goes on and, and could affect how many people we're going to see coming, you know, in front of us. Uh, the second thing I like to address is the money that we've lost. Uh, we've already lost $1.2 million uh, 
you know, in revenues that's coming from utilities. If we don't do something about this this year, we're going to lose another four hundred thousand dollars, and uh, the reval's got to be done. Uh, one more year, I don't think it's going to make that much difference between the values now and the values later, but four hundred thousand dollars make a big difference. Um, so, I speak in favor of us going ahead and moving ahead with this reval because I think it's the it's well. It's past time, really, because if we'd have moved on this thing a little sooner, we wouldn't have lost that one point two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Many of our departments that uh, that we're struggling right right now, look at what uh, you could uh, help those with in those revenues without having to raise property taxes uh, on the citizens. And I would uh, <coughs> like to also uh, say too that Mr. Moser made a point. Of revenue neutral, revenue neutral is 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 a vital thing, and I think hope that citizens out here. I've tried to express this to people that I've talked to, that even though your property values may go up, if we go to revenue neutral, your bill will stay close to the same thing. So, commissioners, to me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, we need to we needed to do this and we don't need to put this off any longer we need to move ahead and move ahead with this and um, sooner sooner would be better than later and uh, thank you for your time and we thank, thank you. you anybody else on this side of the room all right yes sir just state your name and address and then we'll start the clock thank you thank you uh, thank you. My name is Colin Cannell. I'm a resident of the city of Mebane. Um, and uh, on the topic of the scheduled values itself, I have two comments. First, I appreciate the work of Mr. Atkins and the uh, department. It's really an amazing body of work. Uh, we who are about to pay salute you. Uh, and uh, the, only, the only other comment I have on the scheduled values itself, I don't know if anybody looked, page 132, is there really a house with 39 bathrooms? in it i don't know that there is a house with 39 <laughs> bathrooms in it um i'm trying to recall if that was because we had one or i'm trying to illustrate the principle of how okay <laughs> it was a it was an addition huh? there is an illustration in built more and we certainly don't have that <laughs> okay <laughs> it this was new since the 2017 valuation and i was just curious if somebody had built one that's hey, all <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to sort of bring this back into line yeah sorry you need to make your comment yes the substance of my comments today is in regards, as, as his word, to the timing of the revaluation. As I listened to the commissioner's discussion last month, I was concerned that some of you seem to be considering delaying the revaluation uh, because of the threat of the recession. You thought there might be a risk that Mr. Atkins' team might overvalue some houses. And I wanted to urge you this morning to move forward with the revaluation as originally scheduled despite the coming recession. The harm that might be caused by proceeding with the revaluation this year is really insignificant compared to the harm that'll be causing and is being caused every day by continuing to operate with the 2017 valuations. And I'm going to give you three reasons why the county shouldn't delay the revaluation. First, uh, delaying the revaluation uh, will continue to place a disproportionate burden of property taxes on people who buy newly built housing. So I'll give you an example. I have two examples of, of property taxes here. One of them is mine. One of them is a house that was built uh, just last year. This is, this is these, both of these houses in market value are worth roughly the same. Uh, this is my property tax bill. I pay in Mebane $2,000 a month. This is also in Mebane. This person, I'm sorry, not a month, a year. This person pays $4,000 a year for a house that is worth the same amount of money. So it is not the case that everybody's property taxes are going to stay the same. The houses that have been built since the previous revaluation, those houses are being valued at current market values. And um, it, is, it is not fair to those uh, residents. We're building something like 800, 900 housing units in this county every year. So in six years since the last valuation, that's about 5,000 new homes, about two people per home, that's 10,000 Alamance County citizens 
who are paying more than their share of property taxes, and in some cases, dramatically so. And it's an injustice to these citizens to delay the revaluation any longer than absolutely necessary. And if you delay it a year, it'll be an injustice to those 2,000 voters, I'm mean, sorry, citizens, uh, to delay it any longer for them. Uh, second, delaying the re Is that my timer? Uh, okay, can I give one more? Uh, it will continue to hamper the operation of municipal governments. The municipal governments uh, rely on those property taxes uh, in their municipal codes. There is an assumption that the tax values um, have uh, relation to the market values of the land, and when that ceases to be true, it has unexpected effects on their operations. And I uh, really apologize. Okay. We have to be fair to you. Yes. Everybody. Sorry about that. Thanks uh, so much. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room? Anybody else? There's nobody in waiting, I assume. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> um, is Jeremy done or can we ask him a question? Absolutely. Commissioner, you can. Like, is he done or can I ask him a question? <laughs> <laughs> you may ask. Okay. <laughs> we need to um, the public hearing. I, are we okay? We're good. Okay. Um, when you hear the word eval, people are just starting to panic. Right. When you look at what everything costs, everybody's just, just ticked off. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's a big day. Mm -hmm. this, everything's riding on everything, so right. to speak. And um, when we hear this word about reval and property taxes, you know, we're going to have all kind of opinions and everything like that. Whenever, I, I think sometimes um, we, we have to make sure we explain what it is we're saying that's really a good choice, that we may think it's a good choice, but when somebody hears the amount of $400,000, like what the heck is that when you say you four hundred thousand dollars utilities some may think is that a duke power bill is that a power pole sure. you know what is that sure. so i think um it's real important that we explain why we think we should move this up or why we should not mm -hmm. because like mr vines was talking about it cost us a loss of 1.2 million how does it how do we have a loss of 1.2 million mm -hmm. because that's like I read the book of James, you know, Texas, right, right. and I mean, and that's just how it is, and, and I'm clueless here, but all I know about being informed is to understand what it is you're saying and why we should understand that, because many times the word eval is a lightning rod mm -hmm. from previous histories or whatever, just the fact that it represents change, mm -hmm. and I think with just the state of everything right now, with it's just costing everything so much. I don't think the public needs one more thing that they think is going to take money from them that they really need to buy their groceries with. So can you elaborate on like this utilities, what that is, and where and how we misplaced 1.2 million? If you can just bring it on down to my level, Jeremy, I think that'll really help the public a lot because this is a big deal. Well, what I would say, the uh, thing that the public is going to feel the most. And revenue neutral. Is the How does that just fix exactly. everything? It's the okay. interaction between the values that we set and the tax rate that is set. Okay. So if we were to go up in valuation, but the tax rate came down by the same amount, it would be revenue neutral, then the average citizen would have no change in their bill. Now, to be clear, a lot of citizens will have a lot of changes in their bills the average won't change some people the bill will go up some people the bill will go down but the the across the board average at revenue neutral would remain the same well what drives that is the expenses that the county incurs right the more we have to spend out or the less revenue comes in affects that tax rate and affects what actually happens to somebody's wallet or the checkbook uh, when we're talking about the utilities that's where this becomes a concern okay. So the Department of Revenue reviews our numbers every year comparing what sold to what we had it valued at. And as the market has been growing, our values are relatively lower. We're not able to capture what they're really selling for out there. As that occurs, they try to rebalance things for us. 
and the way that they do this is they dock our corporate assessment. These are our public utilities. This is the power company and the phone company and the railroads and, and all this. They dock us off of that and reduce the revenue that we can receive. And the impact is roughly 400000 a year. And that should be a motivator to us to go ahead and bring our values back into line with current market, and that would alleviate that reduction in our revenue. Well, the, the specific tax values that we choose, whether we, we raise those to current market or not, is potentially neutral if this board sets revenue neutral. But what is not neutral is 400000 a year that we are not receiving from the public utilities. That's, that's money that we could have in that is, we're still spending. We're not closing down offices over 400000 a year, but it goes into what we're collecting from our citizens. Everyone is having to subsidize that. And so there's a real incentive to let's remedy. Let's get our values up to par. Let's get that money coming back in. And so that's the 1.2 that was mentioned, another 400000 coming uh, if we decide to, to push it back. Of, of lost revenue that really is an impact to the average person to the check they're going to write. When you just say docking whoever, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Sure. So um, I assess all property in the county except the public utilities. The public utilities are so large spanning multiple counties that the Department of Revenue themselves assess that. They say what these are worth and then they tell each county, here's your share, here's your share. We take that information and we produce tax bills, and the tax bills are paid generally with a 100% rate of payment. The utilities, you know, almost never do you have a problem with payment. Well, when they see that their utility values, which they change every year, they're always current, um, are out of step with the real property values, they say, well, that's not fair to the utility company. The utility company isn't current and everyone else isn't. And so they find the difference and they reduce those utilities to make them equal. So when I get an amount to bill, that amount has been reduced. And we make those bills and we send them out, but they're in a lower amount to match them up with the lower real property values. And that's currently hitting us for about 400000 a year that we would have had in that bill we send out that we can't bill anymore. That's lost revenue to the, to the county and it's revenue that is borne by the, the real property owners. We're, it, it's a way of shifting the burden from the um, public utilities back onto the real property owners. If we fix the property tax valuations for real property, that goes away. Suddenly the Department of Revenue serves us with the true value and we bill on the true value and we bill an extra $400,000. Well, is, is revenue re revenue neutral Revenue neutral, mm -hmm. is that real or is it just our way of saying we're going to do this and that way nobody's rates change? So it, it, it's a real thing. Um, it has to be published whether or not it's adopted. And so the, the rate would have to be determined and made public that if we adopted this rate, your taxes on average would not change. And I want to stress that on average piece. I'll come back to that. That has to be disclosed. Now, the board does not have to adopt it. The board could adopt above revenue neutral, which would constitute an increase in taxes. Even if the rate goes down, if it doesn't go all the way down to revenue neutral, the public knows their taxes were just raised. The board could also go below revenue neutral. They could say, I see that point, but we were going to cut it a penny. We're going to go under revenue neutral. The board can set it wherever the board wants but it has to be published. This is what neutral would be, so that communities can keep their elected officials uh, accountable for what that tax rate is. Uh, what this board has expressed on a number of occasions is a willingness to go revenue neutral, uh, to say that would balance out any increase that my values would bring would be balanced back on the tax rate. But I want to talk about that average. There are um, properties, as we review them, that have grown much faster and properties that have grown much slower. So if, if you are one of the up and coming <coughs> properties out there, your bill will go up at revenue neutral. If you're one of the ones that's lagging behind, your bill will go down at revenue neutral. So it isn't to say that everybody's bill is flat, it's to say the average is flat. But the market has some areas that grow faster than others and so it will rebalance itself. So 
with this revenue neutral, if you apply it, mm -hmm. there's still a tax rate increase, right? Like, Not so to speak, with properties mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, for but you don't you don't use it because right. of this magic potion thing you're going to put on it. So, so, to speak. so well, no. So for transparency, the burden on personal property owners will probably go down. The burden on real property owners will probably go up. But if you have a house and two cars, you're a personal property owner and a real property owner, right? So the, the fact that we are adjusting real property will shift the burden from personal to real a little bit. And the fact that we're bringing it up to current market means those areas that have had the most growth will get a larger bill. And those areas of the least growth will get a smaller bill. So th there, there's going to be some shuffling. But if you get down to the bottom line number, it's flat, flat as a pancake at the, at the bottom line. The average person or the bottom line is unchanged. And that's a very real thing. That's something we're not having to, to um, do anything special to address. It's just that's what revenue neutral does. It just seems like a whole lot of talk and a whole lot of do to get back to nothing. Right. Oh. Well, and, and I would say the intent um, of revaluation, uh, if I can uh, take liberty to share, when I started with the county, I was going door to door visiting properties uh, in connection with the 2009 revaluation. I started back in 2006. And what I heard over and over is, oh, the county needs more money. County needs more money. And when I first started, I was fairly ignorant. I thought, well, I guess maybe they do. I'm just here to, to look at your property. I didn't know the tax end of the world. I just knew property valuation. That was my, I was an appraiser by trade. In learning how that the system works, uh, revaluations are not revenue generators. They're not designed to. They're not meant to, to give the county more money. They are meant to keep people on par with each other, to keep things from getting um, out of step with what the market is, to get keep neighbors from getting out of step. That's the goal. And that's why revenue neutral gets published, is it's not there to, to gain revenue. It's not there to, to cause person's tax bills to go up. If, if, if the tax bills are rising, it's because we didn't adopt revenue neutral. <coughs> right. Now, an individual, we can adopt revenue neutral, and they might come to you and say, well, Commissioner Thompson, my bill went up. But another person might come to you and say, Commissioner Thompson, my bill went down. On average, the bill should be about the same. My guess would be that the individual if their taxes went down, mm -hmm. they're not likely to come thank you. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, one quick question. Mr. Axe, can you remind us uh, what is our statutory deadline we have to complete this process by? All right. So uh, initially, we were out on an eight-year cycle, but due to the uh, difference between our valuation as the market has grown and true market, the Department of Revenue limited it to seven years. So. Uh, we would have to do it in 2024. Um, we chose to do it in 2023. The advantage of that is some mobility, um, because we, we definitely remember what happened in 2009. Having the opportunity to, to step it back if we need to is important. Uh, but all we could do is move it back one year. So our only options are do it this year or do it next year. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we do have, I guess, the option to change from an eight-year cycle to a four-year cycle, right? So currently, um, we have filed with Department of Revenue, and the board has changed from an eight to a six for one time for this time, right. and to a four for all subsequent. So if the board takes no action, next time would be on a four. Right. The board could always come back and say that's not what we want to do and, and could change that. But without intervention, it would be four thereafter. As Mr. Lyons pointed out, we're losing roughly four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars per year, mm -hmm. and that reevaluation re would prohibit that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, we'd save four hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. Mm -hmm. Is we the government? Is the uh, county as far as uh, county revenues are down four hundred thousand for the cause that uh, we, we are too far out of step from the market? If we had a shorter revaluation cycle, we wouldn't be out of step with the market. We wouldn't be penalized at four hundred thousand. Board, any other questions? We thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor of closing the public hearing say, signify by saying aye. 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 Did everyone vote? Okay. okay. Thank you. It's unanimous. Mr. Lashley, we're not hearing from you. Or <laughs> are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm just uh, just observing. I uh, agree 100 percent with what uh, Jeremy said. Uh, I, I totally think Jeremy's got his finger on the pulse here. He's done this a few times, so uh, I have complete confidence that uh, Mr. Aikens is going to do a fabulous job because he always does a fabulous job. Um, I liked what Mr. Vines said. Um, I think Mr. Vines and the other gentlemen were dead on. Um, I, I hope that um, the second gentleman who spoke who thought that uh, the county commissioners were, um, you know, going to push this back. I never had never had an intentions of put pushing it back because of what Mr. Vine said. The 400K is very serious, and it's all because of the Public Utilities Commission. I just wanted to say that you know, as an executive, you have to weigh every single option at your disposal before you make a decision. And I was just in that idea. I was just throwing out everything that the county commissioners are going to be looking at to decide this, and I totally agree that we should not push it off. That's been my stance the whole time. I just wanted the public to realize that there are options and we should look at them and if they don't fit, we move on. And I'm just glad that uh, that uh, we can uh, get this taken care of. It's not gonna be easy and it's not gonna be pretty. I think it's gonna be quite uh, cumbersome because of the increase in values. Uh, it's gonna get a, catch a lot of people by surprise and that's basically what I was talking about at the last meeting. But thank you, Chairman. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll now move to um, item number 7-1. And that is the, uh, we have two appointments for the planning board. Uh, they are different. One is um, about a 13-month term. It's filling the, um, the vacancy of Mr. Brooks, who moved out of county, and therefore that, that vacancy is open. The other is a full term, which would be the three years. Um, do you want to address that before we do anything else? Or have I covered it? I think you covered it. Thank you. Um, I'd like to nominate Mr. G and Doby uh, for the three year term. I'll second that nomination. Any discussion at all about the three year term? Just a question. Um, are you the planning board person? You are, aren't you? Okay, so when uh, a commissioner is the person for whatever these committees are, do, do we, like, say, DSS, do I recommend that person? Or does everybody all of a sudden come in at a meeting and start recommending people they want to recommend? The commissioners make the appointment. Uh, so the commissioners can come in and appoint whomever they choose. Um, Typically, the board itself may or may not, typically does make a recommendation of uh, the person that's on that board. And by the way, with the planning board, I'm the ex officio member, which means I'm not able to vote on matters with the planning board uh, in the board meeting. Uh, but I am obviously required to vote uh, in this county commissioner's meeting. Uh, so. I guess I sort of answered that. I hope gotcha. so. <laughs> well, I just wondered because um, I know sometimes whenever we individually get emails about a certain committee or a board that we our name is on, because I know every December we sign up for various things, I just wanted to make sure that when we get that, we have a right to make a nomination if we've talked with all the people that have applied. Or does that matter when we get here to an open meeting? Anybody can just decide to pull a name out of that group and we'll talk about it that way because I, mean, I, I don't see that yeah. but I have like I'm not the authority to I'm going to appoint somebody do you see what I'm saying right I, so. as, as the planning board uh, exec, ex officio member right uh, can make a recommendation but this board can do whatever it likes okay uh, I can <coughs> listen to my recommendation or not yeah well I absolutely I, Julian's wonderful I didn't know because I'm um, 
there was another name that I was reading that's a small business owner, she's 20 plus years in the construction business, and um, um, she obviously knew what it was like to be hit so hard with COVID, being a small business owner and still have a business post COVID. So uh, I didn't know if she had been looked at or not, or just if that was just it. Because I, I look at all the names, and y'all know how I feel about when it comes to getting as much. Uh, diversity is not the word I'm looking for because it's a hot topic, but to get as many people from all different areas of this county to represent this county instead of the same group of folks with everywhere. I've, I've seen that in nonprofits I work for too. And um, it's good to have that different mindset to bring to the table to kind of work it out and get the best out of all mindsets. And, and um, I mean, you won't find any finer than Julian. I mean, I think he's awesome. And that wasn't, this isn't against him in any kind of way. I just read this lady, this Amy Perkins, and I didn't know if she'd been considered as well. We haven't gotten there yet. I know, we I'm just, sometimes I just I feel like I have to get it in <laughs> or it'll just get, you know. So I just want to ask a simple question, so I'm done. So Ms. Thompson, you and I are thinking exactly okay. alike. <laughs> Uh, okay, we have a motion for the three-year term for Jillian Doby. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, we also have the vacant term for Mr. Brooks. That's approximately 13 months left in that term. And I would like to nominate uh, Amy Perkins, uh, who... Psychic. <laughs> I already had it written down. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, uh, for that uh, that position, do I have a second? I'll second. I'm sorry, Craig. Okay. We have two seconds. <laughs> He's taller than me. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, it's unanimous. Thank you. And congratulations to Mr. Doby and Ms. Perkins. Uh, you'll have a hard job, sir, but <laughs> hopefully it's welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Next is the Justice Advisory Council, or otherwise JAC, which we refer to collectively as JAC. Uh, that is a board that uh, really makes recommendations to all, uh, to the sheriff's department, to law enforcement, to us city, uh, sitting uh, council member, all kinds of things. Uh, and Mr. John, how many members are on that board? Is it 30 or more? Would you guess? It's a, it's a lot. Um, and I think, Ms. Thompson, you're currently serving on that mm -hmm. board for the County Commissioner. Yeah, I was on it as a Board of Education. It's a, it's a quite a group of leaders, and I mean it's 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 really group of leaders. I got an opportunity about two weeks ago to fill in for Ms. Thompson, and it was an eye-opening meeting. It was very interesting. You don't need to break the law if you're in that room. No, that's <laughs> right. Well. Are we ready for nominations? I think we are. I would like to nominate uh, Mr. Bradley Marley. I'd spoken with, um, it was a, quite a list of folks and they're all extremely qualified. Um, he's, has, he's been living there in Alamance County, but he's uh, got two children in our school system. He works for Moorhead Kane. I mean, he's really a bright young person. Um, he really wants to get involved in the community. He's got a lot to bring. He's also a volunteer fireman. And when I was reading the qualifications about NAMI, because I mean, that, that's just the epitome of strong mental health services, um, I think he highly recommends being a community advocate, being a first responder. He has face-to-face -face crises. He provides support and rescue for people in the worst times of their life, possibly losing their life or losing their home or whatever. So um, he can bring something kind of different. And I, like I stressed before, I think it's good to get a lot of different mindsets to bring that cover all kind of areas with um, these different committees, because um, we have our we're a county that's really looking forward to taking some big steps with our great mental health provider, VIA, and, um, and our diversion center. Uh, you've heard me talk about the specialty courts that I want us to invest in, and I've got something to show you all about Surrey County, how they are working with their economic plan of getting these folks off the street and working with different corporations, kind of like uh, Bill Bowers does for Sustainable Elements, getting them back into the workforce. This works good with homeless veterans, getting their boots back on the ground. and 
and that where they work with their opioid response crisis team, which I hope we can have one here. It all goes together. So um, I am recommending uh, Brad for Marley. That's that's my personal recommendation. I also would like to nominate Bob Creighton. Uh, Mr. Creighton um, is a retired veteran. He's a disabled veteran. And this board, this Jack board, by the way, uh, the reason we had one vote under the consent agenda was of the applicants. That particular person that was approved under the consent agenda met the various slots that we have to put on the Jack committee. Um, and the other, the remaining members did not. So that's why that one went on the consent agenda. Uh, these, we have several that meet the this next opening. Um, and the individual that Ms. Thompson indicated certainly would meet it, and <coughs> Mr. Creighton would. Um, i just like to nominate Mr. Creighton because he's uh, done so much for this county. He is a disabled veteran, which meets one of the slots that are required for the Jack Committee. Do we have a second as to either of those or other nominations? Well, I'll, I'll second Mr. Creighton. I mean, I, I believe Mr. Marley is, <coughs> is capable and, and, and would support him to, to apply again. I just and I'm looking at Mr. Mr. Creighton's qualifications. He's a member of four NAMI boards, uh, very active with VIA, who is our LMMCO, uh, and has goals to divert people away from the justice system, which is consistent with what we're trying to do with the diversion center. So I, mean, I just think he's the choice that I would make at the moment, but I would hope Mr. Molly would apply again. So I would second Mr. Creighton. Mr. Lashley, you cannot vote, but would you like to comment? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about these two nominees. Uh, my choice on between these two folks, and right now I'm looking at their qualifications as we speak, uh, I think Mr. Creighton is head and shoulders above everyone who's filed for this position. Uh, he, like uh, I couldn't say it any better than uh, Commissioner Turner did, uh, he is uh, very qualified. He is a, he's, Alamance County is his home, and he definitely proves it every single day. And I, I'm, I would just hope that uh, the commissioners would uh, would think about Bob Creighton. And if you uh, if you wanted to look at his qualifications, I would say take a, take an opportunity to do that, and I, I believe you will feel the same way I do. And I'll add to that. I went to school with Rob with Bob since the first grade. He's one of my dear friends. When he nearly died a couple years ago, I visited him at the VA hospital while my dad was getting his chemo treatment. And so, I, I mean, I'm his biggest fan. And he serves on a whole lot of committees. And that's the, the main reason that I was supporting Mr. Marley is because he is um, younger and get not younger, but young to the community and getting involved in Alamance County and committed. And I can't even touch the commitment that Bob has. There is no, no nothing wrong with Bob Creighton. Like I said, from six years old, we've been buddies. And uh, I just really hope that we can build our community. It's like when you um, have a basketball team and you've got a great freshman class and you don't recruit anybody else and then they do become seniors and even if they won every year of their ball games they're graduating and if you don't have a good bench there you go so that's what i'm saying and that's not a reflection on bob because like i said i'll defend him to the end he's one of the kindest people you ever meet and he has served his country with armor so i'm just saying that's my thing and uh, i know it's, it's whatever it is so just vote yeah, we have a uh, motion and a second on Mr. Creighton. Uh, I don't think we have a second on Mr. Marley. Is that correct? So I think we can only vote on one. Is that correct? Correct at this point. Right. And just remember, I had nominated Bobby Foster last time, and he has foundations that work in the business, and you pulled him to vote for this meeting. So that's two. So we're good. Okay. Any further discussion? Just that I hope Mr. Marley would apply again. And I would also agree with that. Uh, all in favor of Mr. Brayton signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? I'm not going to vote against him. I love him. He's my friend. But I just recommended someone else. So it's a 4 right. Thank you.
Okay, uh, Mr. Baker. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, bringing an updated uh, master plan for Cedar Rock Park for you this morning. Um, it's it's been a little bit since the last master plan. The last master plan was uh, adopted when the park was built, and November 1st last week marked the 47th anniversary of Cedar Rock Park being open. So it's probably time to take another look <laughs> at that plan, which we've done here. Um, Were you born 47 years ago? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> does it I look like? You does it look like I was? I didn't know. I don't know. You could do it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Cedar Rock Park and I are the same age. Um, <laughs> Time for a name change. Please <laughs> note for the record that I did not ask that question. That's, uh, uh, Cedar Rock is. And for the record, that's an inside joke. <laughs> Cedar Rock is far more popular than I am. Um, it remains our most popular park. At, uh, we get 133,000 people a year at Cedar Rock, which is our most popular park. Um, the reality is we do this planning process on a cyclical basis and our planning throughout and just don't, don't normally bring this to you. But the reason we're bringing a formal plan to you today is we are applying to the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund for some additional funds to replace the playground there with a universal design playground. We brought that to you a few meetings ago mm -hmm. um, f to uh, get some funding, additional funding from Impact Alamance. Uh, we're also applying to the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund for a, a big portion of that. Um, that review process gives us additional points if we have a master plan and if that master plan is adopted by the board. So that's why we've decided to take the formal step of bringing it before you today. Um, it's a big document, a lot of appendices. Uh, the meat is in the first 20 pages. Um, and really, page 18 lays out what our plans are for the next few years. Um, the biggest part portions of that are rerouting some of the trails which we have already done this year that's our 22 23 uh, plan is to reroute the trails to move the camping uh, to a more convenient location closer to the restrooms closer to the road to make it a little more user friendly and to add the third disc golf course that will allow us to host the women's national championship next year um, so that's what's happening this year um, moving forward next year, if we can get all these funds, we would like to replace the playground. Um, we'll be doing some updates to some of our shelters, and really our biggest need after that is replacement of some of the shelters. The shelters are all original to the park, so they were built in the mid-70s. They've held up very well, uh, but they're a little outdated and in need of repair at, the, at this point. So the next few years we'll be trying to tackle that issue with the shelters. Um, but all that's uh, encapsulated in the plan if you guys have any specific questions about it i'm happy to answer those questions and on page 19 i would indicate you have a very good map as to the progression and what you plan to do uh over the next uh well through 2025. yeah i'm sorry I've read it if you'd like a copy no, I was gonna get a picture. <laughs> okay <laughs> um, is the disc is the disc golf of the there's a proposal for a new disc golf course right and right. we right. I think the numbers I saw when reading through here was we had hundred and eighty thousand attendees does that sound right to the park this to year? the park that was probably right uh, that's probably our 2021 number to be honest with you we got a, a little COVID bump there for a couple of years we're probably settling back to our normal number which is about 150 still, uh, still strong it's probably where we need to be 180 gets gets a little crowded there on a Saturday to be honest so how many disc golf courses will we have out there at, at completion of the new one the four the three no three total yep and I think there's some some indication that might be an opportunity for a, like some sort of a disc golf tournament. Yeah, so we've already been awarded uh, the 2023 uh, Women's National Championship uh, disc golf tournament. It's going to be a fantastic event. Uh, that's why we're building the third course. Disc golf, like regular golf, has changed over the year uh, over the years because they get stronger and they throw it longer and the courses just get out of date. So just like a regular golf course. 
uh, a 30 year old golf course needs renovations or needs to be replaced. Right. Uh, same with the disc golf course. So our current disc golf courses were built 30 years ago and they, they're not compatible with a professional game at this point. Okay. Um, was it last meeting or meeting before last one we uh, elected to promote an annual balloon festival in the county? Last yeah. meeting? Two meetings ago, I believe. Two meetings ago. Would that be something that would be an event that might be timed? Would there be, a, would there be an opportunity to time multiple events in the same weekend to bring even more people in to visit various um, sure, I think venues, that, so to speak. I think those particular events um, are both going to have enough attendees to literally fill up the park. Uh, to be honest with you, really? so as of now, they are timed wow. two weeks apart. Um, next year's uh, balloon festival is going to be the second weekend of September. The disc golf tournament will be the fourth weekend of September, if I have okay. that right. Um, and so they'll be two so weeks they apart. Fill up the park. They will both. Wow. Okay. We we would not want those together because we couldn't fit all the people. So. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Are there plans to take some of the the land, the fields, or whatever to make additional parking lots if we're going to start having Pseudo Rock as like a venue? So right now we don't have any plans to make any parking lots permanent. Um, so the horse pasture up front served us pretty well during the balloon festival as a temporary parking mm -hmm. lot one two or three weekends a year uh, and I think that's our current plan um, probably don't need any more permanent lots mm -hmm. for a day-to-day -day usage Mr. Turner we've not heard from you I'm happy thank you <laughs> Mr. Lashley any comments you want out for coffee okay nope nope I'm all good I got coffee right here <laughs> <laughs> Now, I just want to thank uh, Brian for his, uh, you know, I, I'm just very proud of this gentleman because he has his pulse on the Parks and Recreation, and I think what he's advocating here is exactly what the Parks and Recreation needs. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, with the Balloon Festival uh, on an annual basis. I, I've always, I, I sit on the Parks and Rec Committee, and the first time I sat in that, I wanted to see if we could increase the revenues to the parks and recreation because I have taken people to the uh, Cedar Rock Park from out of state, New York, New Jersey, uh, Chicago, and everyone that I have taken to that park is amazed that this park belongs to the county. It looks like a state park. It runs like a state park. And I'm just so, uh, so proud to be associated with the parks and recreation. Uh, they do a great job. And uh, I am firmly happy that we are looking forward to try to uh, increase the revenues to the Parks and Recreation because like Ms. Pan Ms. Ms. Uh, Commissioner Thompson knows, uh, they need this. They, they need to have increased revenues because without revenues, they can't do what they need to do uh, for the county. And I'm really happy that this is uh, this is taking place and I uh, hope that going forward I can help the Parks and Recs increase those revenues because that's my goal. Thank you. Thank you. This is one more of those, as Mr. Vines again had indicated, or Mr. Moser, I've forgotten which one, uh, indicated very, very, very positive thing for this county. Uh, it's a relatively large park. Uh, it's low impact financially, uh, so it serves the county at a low impact cost-wise. Uh, and we're just very, very fortunate. And we thank you because you've done so much to make it be what it is today. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Paisley, too, this is the only park that's a farm park. And we as farmers are very proud of that, too. Mm -hmm. This is what this, you know, I didn't mean to. I know I'm out of it, you're, you're out of order, but I like the comment. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just wanted, you know, if folks that's didn't true. know this, that this is, a, this, this is a farm park. And our children go to to this on the fourth grade level. I've participated mm -hmm. many times, you know, through the table programs that lets our kids know, and they just they're always at an awe to see all the stuff that's out there. Mm -hmm. Because he's not on mic, uh, just to sort of repeat, <laughs> what is a farm park? Uh, one of the few I know of in this whole region, uh, maybe the only one, 
uh, two school children are trained there, educated there on a regular basis. Um, I take my grandchildren out there on a regular basis. Um, and that Frisbee course is phenomenal and bringing it to the third level, yeah. uh, third course, we do now, we're eligible for the national competition and I think that's major. Um, and that brings in a lot of, even if you don't consider uh, resources with the park itself, just think about the economic impact positive that it has for this county with restaurants and motels and yeah. uh, all kinds of things. So uh, I suspect a couple of the venues here that sell sporting goods sell a lot of Frisbees. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they do. It's gotten disc extremely golf. popular. Disc golf. Okay. So they are discs. <laughs> I was not, I was not going to correct you. But. <laughs> I stand correct. Um, <laughs> well, one of the changes that we're making uh, is to one of the hiking trails, or, um, and it, by popular demand, is moving next to the ho the pasture so that people can hike by the sheep and goats because that's what they want to do. So uh, it is the only park that I know of um, in the state that has a working farm. Um, so sheep and goats and the mule will get more exposure now, which they he need. He needs a partner. He needs a partner. He, he does. Not a love partner, but just a partner. Hard to tell the difference. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, eHarmony.com, <laughs> not at Cedar Rocks. So. As a mule, <laughs> having grown up on a farm and as, as a mule, I don't think that matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last time I checked. So. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make the motion to approve this new revised plan. Second. Motion second. Any further comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. And it's unanimous. Okay, Mr. Stevens, I think you're next. Yes, sir. I don't really have a presentation for you all today. That happened last time, and in stark contrast to the last presentation, this one's fairly mundane. Uh, like we said before, uh, the ordinances related to solid waste management and recycling need to be updated. They're both over 10 years old at this point. And if you have any questions about what we proposed last time, I'm happy to answer those. Otherwise, I would ask that the board adopt those policies as amended. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, we, we were talking earlier this week about some issues with the um, uh, language around disposal of uh, unusable donations to 501c3s and the fact that we're waiving tipping fees and you had indicated there was some ambiguity I think you said in the language is that being corrected in this update? That, I'm sorry sir uh, that language has not been amended in the new ordinance. So it remains as it was before. And okay. the language of the ordinance um, is, is clear. I think the way it's been perhaps interpreted in practice has made things a little bit ambiguous. I can't necessarily speak to that. Mr. Hill is here today. If you have a specific question, I'll direct him to answer the specific question. But that part of the ordinance has not changed. It's concerning. I guess your question is concerning nonprofits. Five hundred one six. Can they bring product to the landfill free of charge? Is that the question? Correct. I think historically, we, we it, it was part of as long as you're registered, that would be something that we would be willing to do. Now, there's some specific specificity in the language to mm -hmm. materials that have not been. Mm -hmm or that have been donated but are not usable by 501c3, but I think what we've been doing is pretty much allowing just about anything that's brought down by 501c3 to be disposed of in the landfill. Is that correct? So and there is an exception, though, for uh, donations and so forth to nonprofits that are well, now not usable. To. Yeah, that, that's in the new... Right, uh, that's, new that's in the language, and that's... That's what was in the that's what was in the old language, but it's not being enforced that way. And I'm just, do we not want to? Either, if we're not going to enforce what's in the language, do we not want to correct the language to make it broader and allow for? In other words, we're, 
we I think we need to be consistent in enforcing it. it even either enforce it as it's specified or change the language so that it allows for any disposal by 501 C threes. Do we provide the way and the manner for this stuff to happen? Or? We do not. We have no no service that would be upon the um, the five hundred one C that bring your body to Atlanta. Mr. Stevens, do you have a recommendation as to a modification? Um, we would certainly you like to re research. <laughs> I'm certainly happy to research the issue. I mean, it did come up last week in conversations related to the revisions. Um, I, I think we either need to adopt it and then enforce it as it's written, or we need to amend. I, I don't know that I have a recommendation as to which way we should go with that. Um, I, I have been led to believe that with franchises coming in and starting to operate within the landfill structure, that it may be more difficult for us to allow for those exceptions to take place. So a revision might be in order at this point, given the fact that that could be our future. So. Uh, I'm certainly happy to revisit that, revise, and we can resubmit this ordinance to the commissioners. Lord, would it be appropriate then to allow our county attorney to research it and come back to us on the uh, 21st? I think that makes sense. Well, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Would, would, if we amended the ordinance, would we have to start the process over? Yes. Uh, I believe we would because we're adopting the ordinance in whole and because of the fact there's a criminal penalty associated with it, there'd have to be a second presentation and then a subsequent vote at an additional is, is this one provision of a larger, of a much larger ordinance? It is one provision. And, and to be clear also, there's two ordinances being proposed today, one for solid right. waste and one for recycling. So any decision as to one or the other could be made independently of the other ordinance. I mean, my thought, Mr. Chairman, is that, I mean, our ordinances are old. There are people who are depending upon us to make a decision on both of these ordinances, which are much larger than this particular issue. I would think we would vote this, these up or down and then ask Mr. Stevens to look at the specific provision that is issued, which we could then tailor uh, at, you know, over another two meetings if we wanted to. I'm uh, fine with that. I'd hate to lose momentum in what's a bigger picture on this one issue. Uh, that's certainly possible. We could vote on it today, and then we could vote to change it at some point in the future. Would that require a public hearing or anything of the sort? Not a public modification. Not a public hearing. It would require a presentation and a subsequent vote. So two readings. Two readings. Mm -hmm. right. Do we have a lot of nonprofits that do this? No, Whatever no, this there's, is. There's not a ton. No. It's not a day-to-day -day activity. I mean, I don't even know where I would land on the on the change. I mean, I haven't looked at it. I haven't thought about it. I mean, I guess I've thought about it, but not well enough to be able to make a decision today. So, I mean, I think we need to decide on the bigger issue and then come back to it. I, I would think most nonprofits are operating, I don't know, in municipalities or whatever, are probably disposing of materials through the normal trash pickup, and we don't ever even see it down there that way. Would that be a reasonable assumption? It, yeah, it could be all over the place. I mean, we, I remember we had a couple years ago where there was a border damage to a nonprofit, and they wanted to completely empty their building and part of their building. So that's a much bigger issue right. than just we have some products that are no longer usable. So I think there needs to be some clarity if we just go across the board and say, if you're a 501C, then whatever you want to do, you can do. That can be more problematic than something a little more limited. And my goal in this is not to make it more difficult for nonprofits or more expensive for nonprofits, but just be have a have an ordinance that documents what we what we're doing versus saying one thing and we're doing something else. So in that case, would the landfill have taken one of those giant dumpster things to help them to sit beside that and then you go pick it up and then take it back to the landfill and then waive the fees? Typically, that is not what we've been to. We do. We do not inventory a large amount of dumpsters that we don't utilize day to day. Um, we have updated our fleet in recent years. We do have more dumpsters than we used to, and we also have up to date equipment for transport. Um, just recently, in this year's budget, we've added a new Class A driver and a new road truck. So we 
we didn't do any of that specific to 501s uh, or nonprofits. We did that specific to other problems. But if the board wanted us to provide that, that would be something you would have to tell us to do. Is that clear? Historically, we haven't had the driver, the truck, or the dumpsters that were even possible to do some of those things. Have we done that before, ever? Yeah, I think there's probably been some locations okay. where we've been asked to take one down and let them utilize it. Does that come from a county position? We, we would never do it without authority. Okay. The authority would be a county manager, right? Correct. Not us to vote on something like that. We would take it from a county manager. Okay. And we, as commissioners, probably wouldn't even know about it. Unless a commissioner asked. Yeah. And I just did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing that language in the ordinance. Do you know, Richard, where that's at? Or it is. I read it last night. Okay. I don't recall, which Sorry. I talked about. Okay. It's referred to as a charitable organization. Oh, I see. Thank you. Tipping fee for those donated items unusable as a part of their operation. Thank you. I just always want us to be fair for all of our nonprofits. Absolutely. Because they all do phenomenal work, no matter what it is. Mr. Turner, were you making a motion I, to? That's exactly what I was going to do, is that we move <laughs> that we uh, approve the revised solid waste ordinance and the recycling ordinance. I'll As sorry. written. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. <laughs> Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're down to county manager. Yes. Um, two things I wanted to mention to the board this morning. Um, Commissioner Lashley had asked me for an update on the audit process, so I just wanted to um, publicly um, answer his question about that. Um, we are anticipating getting <coughs> back from our auditing firm sometime late next week, and we'll have that submitted to the Local Government Commission by their deadline of November 30th. So that is on track, and we do not yet have the draft, but from what we're hearing from them, uh, we should have that shortly and Good. moving as moving ahead timely and as planned. Um, the other update I wanted to mention was that we're planning to bring um, an update to the board on the courthouse renovation project. We'll have the CRA folks here, um, the group that we've contracted with, on a revision to the last um, renovation project that you saw. So we'll be, we've been working with the court stakeholders and we'll bring that to the board for an update at your next meeting. Is that the folks that was talking about a four story, that group, the architects? Okay. Yes. Yep. Thank you. And that's all I had. Thank do, you. Do we also have a groundbreaking that ought to be made? We do. We <laughs> have that scheduled for Thursday, I believe. Um, let me just make sure I have that date accurate. Um, yes, the Diversion Center groundbreaking is scheduled for Thursday the 10th, and that's at 9 a.m. out on the site. Oh, that's 963 Kirkpatrick Road. And repeat that address again, please. Sure. 963 Kirkpatrick Road in Burlington for the Diversion Center groundbreaking. That used to be a restaurant years ago, and I've forgotten the name. Shays. Shays. They had the best prime rib ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I met prime rib. I didn't know what it was. God, it was good. And I do know that we have the VIA folks here. We do. And they are making this possible. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you. Definitely. Is there anything you guys want to just mention quickly about the diversion center or not? Do you want me to come to the microphone? Or? Either way, okay. wherever you're well, coming. Uh, we're very excited about the diversion center. Um, we are working with the JAC committee to create subcommittees, one for services, one for construction, and one for community engagement to make sure that the county is included in all of the decisions for the diversion center so it's catered to your needs. So we're very excited to be a part of it. And we thank you. Thank you. Okay, county commissioners, um, Bill, you're you're the uh, lone man out. Do you want to be first? Are you yes, in sir. the Bahamas? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate it. 
Um, commissioner comments is what we're doing, right? Correct. Okay. I uh, just want to thank Heidi for that information concerning the audit. Uh, as uh, Ms. Evans knows, uh, I asked her a couple meetings ago about uh, the cleanliness of this audit. It's going to be a whole lot different than last year, which I am so incredibly excited about. Just because uh, this audit coming through is going to give us an opportunity to make the decisions that we need going forward for the county uh, revenues. And I do believe, I can honestly say this, I do believe that our audit process is going to come through, and I believe every single commissioner and every single citizen of Alamance County is going to be very, very happy with the way the finances are being taken care of in the county. We're going to be doing just fine. I'll be more than happy to make a, um, uh, a, a an idea of what that audit would be, but I've already told Ms. Evans, so I'll just keep it between us until it happens. But I do believe that we're going to have increased revenues from the audit and I think that's going to help the county very much. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for giving me the opportunity to talk today and I want to thank Bruce for providing an avenue for me able to uh, listen to this meeting. It's uh, really it's really interesting to look at this, these meetings on this side of the fence so to speak but I just want to thank Bruce and I also want to thank uh, our, our health director Tony Loquidis. Uh, that gentleman is a he is above and beyond the call of duty. Yep. He has done so many great things for Alamance County citizens as far as the health department's concerned. And I just want to thank him for all he's done for me and my family uh, going forward. I just want to thank him for his, his uh, service to the county. And uh, Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Tony, I absolutely agree. Uh, I'm not sure about you giving anything to, to Bill. Oh, I'll we'll go there. <laughs> No, thank you. We appreciate it. And, and appreciate what you're doing. Mr. Turner. I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carter. I'm good. Thank you. Ms. Thompson. I just want to um, give a shout out to Surrey County. They, um, they've got, this is Sonia Cheek, who's there, Krista Knight, RHA specialist, uh, peer support specialist, works in jail and getting people into treatment and all that. She's just been phenomenal. I met her in Concord. Y'all heard her too. And um, they have joined... Um, recovery to work business like the economic launch they're getting a lot of these folks that have been in treatment back in the work field and they've got numerous uh, businesses as 22 local companies that joined on kind of like what Phil Bowers does here with sustainable elements which is um, a big strong link we need to do with RHA and all that and and I wanted to say something and I'm gonna ask the sheriff to back me up on something because you you told me we were in a restaurant together Friday and um, so but um, 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 I don't have a real good attitude and you could probably tell it and I, I need to get rid of the attitude I've got because it's not it's not the kind of attitude I usually have it's just a real burden so anyway um, I'm just gonna start um, I'm gonna talk about um, a motel and it's public knowledge I'm gonna talk about the kind lodge and I'm gonna tell you that last week I decided after I got done with the meeting um, to ride over there just to ride over there for myself because I've, I've seen I went when Captain D's one time they're all boarded up and I saw needles laying everywhere and trash and just work uh, some people were living homeless it's just a mess and they're building 7-eleven the there and and then I seen the homelessness up at where Rite Aid was which is going to be a new gas station it, just heartbreaking and um, but I decided to ride over there last week and I pulled through the parking lot and I noticed the windows where curtains are kind of torn down and just uh, beer bottles and beer cans in the window seals and then you go around this way and there's pumpkin details decals in the window like the families living there with kids for Halloween and um, it just didn't look it just was really interesting and from the outside looking in it, it just it just really struck a nerve with me so I parked my car um, and I sit there I thought I'm just gonna sit here and watch I'm just see what's gonna go on and I saw some young girls outside uh, and then I saw some guys come up and then um, they went up stairwell three they've gone about 20 minutes and they come back down the guys did and they got in their cars and left and the girls come back out and they were standing out there just talking and then this other, another set of guys come up and they were out there talking smoke cigarettes doing whatever they want to it's free America right and then they went up the stairwell too well something caught my eye because there was a car 
parked behind me beside the um, dumpster. And I thought, there's a guy sitting in there. What in the world, you know, is he asleep? No, he wasn't asleep. He uh, sat up, he laid his seat all the way back, and a girl climbed on top of him. So I knew exactly what was going on. And, um, and if I'm embarrassing you, I hope I'm striking a nerve because this is really serious. And um, so I just thought, I gotta get out of here because I know what's going on around me, in front of me, especially behind me. So I went around the building, I went out and I saw some other people I thought, you know what, when I stay in a motel, it's on vacation or it's, um, it's overnight because I'm out of town. And um, I know construction crews come in and a lot of times they'll put their guys and some girls up in places like that to work a job. I get that. And, um, and I know that that happens, you know, and that's what motels are for, but th this ain't what this is. We had a recent bust in that whole location over there. And uh, there's a lot of bad things going over there. And there's a lot of things that are bad that are happening to people that are making really bad choices. So, um, and it, it's just really disturbing because I know where this leads. It leads right over there to that jail, in and out, back to it again, just like recidivism. So then Friday, um, I go with Krista Knight, the peer support specialist, to Rise and Shine restaurant down there on 54, which is the former, I think that was Econo Lodge, really, motel, totally abandoned, boarded up, you know, across the street was the fire where it displaced a lot of families. Thank you, DSS, for working that out and helping with that. And so anyway, um, I'm sitting in there and we're walking in and this young man was walking on the street and um, he was very agitated and he just spit. You know, some of you guys are spitters. I don't understand that, but that's a man thing. And uh, we said hello and we come in and we sit down. And uh, Krista told me, she said, he just got out of the jail yesterday and she showed me his picture on her phone and she said he has schizophrenia and he's really had a really, really traumatically hard life as a young person. So um, he was pacing inside the restaurant. I thought we're fixing to have some trouble and the staff was kind of alarmed to him too. So I asked Chris, I said, go over there and take your phone and show him you were in his picture because he had, she had gotten a book bag with all kind of stuff to leave jail with and ask him if he would um, allow me to buy his lunch. And I said, maybe that'll help with it. So um, he was, his demeanor totally changed. He come over there and sit behind us. Well, the sheriff comes in and he's sitting in the table behind me, him and Pat. I thought, you can't make this up. And so um, I started talking to him and I asked him, I said, where are you staying, son? He's probably in his thirties, I don't know. And uh, he said, I'm staying at the back of that motel. I went, okay. So um, I said, where, I said, have you thought about sustainable elements? Have you thought about allied churches? I said, it's gonna be cold. And the last place you need to be is um, on the streets. And he said, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. He said, I really need a toothbrush and some toothpaste, maybe some deodorant, and that's, that maybe a bar of soap. He said, I can, I can take a bath in the pond. And so um, we got through, and we got through with lunch, and, um, and I sit there, and I, I asked the sheriff, I said, what's it going to take? <sighs> so Chris and I went to South Court Drug, and we bought toothpaste, um, I bought a bag of candy, and I bought two big things of baby wipes because when my son was deployed in the field, boy, you could sell a baby wipe for $50 to a soldier because that's like the really highest end shower they're going to get. I mean, it's a big deal in the woods when you're blowing stuff up with tanks. And so we got that, and so we went back, and he said, I'm going to be on the corner down there at Waffle House with a sign. He's gonna, he said, maybe I can get about $20 so I can get some dinner. And we rode down there, and we couldn't find him. Oh, Lord have mercy. So we decided to ride around at the back of the Econo Lodge. And there on the corner, on the corner of a sidewalk in front of a motel room that's boarded up, was an old green sleeping bag in his book bag. And I thought, there is his life. So we took the bag of stuff that we bought, and I had a pillow and a blanket in the back of my car that I have in case I have to transport someone to drug treatment. And we left that there with a note. And, um, told him to call us to let us know you got this. And he called Krista, he did exactly what we asked him. And um, I looked at that and I told her, I said, we, we gotta get him, we gotta get him somewhere because he doesn't need a pill and a blanket on a slab of cement. It just, it just got all over me. And um, I said, you know, family's everything. And when society, in order to really make it, your family cannot be breaking. And that's what we see 
motels, strips, streets, homeless. You know, and I know it's nothing we really want to talk about, and it's a very expensive problem. But I thought, schizophrenia, his mind's like a pinball. He probably uses some kind of substance to calm himself down, which is not what he needs with mental illness at this level. And I said, diversion back on the streets is my biggest fear. And so um, when I was talking to the sheriff, you know, I just got, I just get just wore out with this. And um, when I was in that parking lot and I seen what I seen with those girls and those guys, both, both parties, and then what happened in the car behind me, oh God, we are just a mess. And, um, and I asked the sheriff, I said, how much money would it take for us to get this crap out of this county? And I said, Rangers, SEALs, FBI, pissed off moms. You know, what's it gonna take for us to do this? Because it's killing us. I said, just, you know, this art money, we're still sitting on it. What are we gonna do with it? Because we can do all this other stuff that's good, but it's the later. We gotta start working on the before. And you know what? I hope my pastor forgives me for saying this. But I want the, the mere mention of Alamance County to scare the hell out of a drug dealer. I want him to just go, I'm not coming here. Because that's who we got to get. We can get these users and these young girls and these men off the street all the time because all they're doing is they're selling their bodies, men and women, because I got clients, they've told me, to just feed their addiction in some nasty motel room or in a car in the back parking lot or wherever. You know, and I, I'm going to sit this out. If there's anybody out there, I will take you to treatment myself if you want to get off the streets. I will support you every week. I'll send you stuff, whatever it takes. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to have a consequence because you're starting to get into our children. And I, that's, you know, there are lines you just can't cross. And so I, I want these dealers in my county, I want you to know that I, I want everybody to come after you and get rid of you because you are killing us one day at a time. Addiction is death every 15 minutes because you don't die. You just use to use again to use again. And when I have young women tell me, you know, Pam, I want heroin more than I want my children. It says everything about our society, about our family, and about who we put in as leaders. That's the key. Your leaders are everything. You know, politicians, they talk all the time. That's, I mean, right now, that's all we hear. And I think you've been in office 35, 40 years. You played with Thomas Jefferson, and you are still in that office, and you ain't done squat to say what you're going to do, and you're telling me what you're going to do again. But politicians talk about it all the time. So, you know, but leaders, they're supposed to do something. Since January 1st, there's been 199 overdoses, and there's been 33 deaths. Now, if we didn't have that little magic bottle of Narcan, we would have 232 deaths. So, I don't know if it's the more deaths is going to affect us. You know, I, I come in here today because I was going to resign because I'm so frustrated. I've never, ever been up against walls like this, ever. But I'm not because... I don't need a title. I need a miracle. And I need us all to work together as a county to save ourselves. I hate politics. I hate politics. I hate it. I so understand now why Jesus flipped a table. And if I could flip that table right now, I would, because I'm as ticked off about this crap as he probably was about overpricing lambs and doves to sell for Passover. So um, I know I seem to be very emotional. But I take this serious because I work with it. I've had people to die, and I don't think it's fair. And when I try to get somebody that's recovered and they've got a record, I can't find them anywhere to live. So see, it's just all an ugly bucket of this mess. It's just all tied together. So Sheriff, I asked you, I would appreciate it if you'd make a comment about the crap that you have to work with, what your deputies have to face with, and how you probably feel just like me. You're just treading water because it's the most hopeless feeling I think I've ever had. And I've worked with a lot of really bad stuff. I have seen a lot of bad stuff. But I can't get anywhere with this, anywhere. And it's going to take all of us, not just one or two or three or four or five. It's going to take all of us. And just like Surrey County, there were 700 overdoses in a year. 
and they got busy. Their commissioner supported their drug recovery. They did everything for them because their citizens were falling. And they're just a little $90,000 place. Mayberry, RFD, Andy Griffin. And look what they're doing. They took it serious and they mean it. And that's what we got to do. And our leaders have to take it serious. And if you don't take it serious, don't run for office. Just don't. Because this, is, this has done something to me as an elected official. I'm absolutely, I've never been this frustrated in my life, ever. I'm sitting here crying at a flippant commissioner meeting because I feel like I'm just hitting this desk over and over. So Sheriff, if you want to come up here and blow our doors off, now's the time to do it because you're my leader and you face this worse than I do and you put your men in danger. Every time they go on a call, they never know if they're coming back because these people don't mess around because these women make them money, these men make them money and that's all this is about is greed and power. What she's saying is absolutely correct. Uh, we got a mess. Uh, I call it the Maple Avenue corridor and over here on Highway 54. We made uh, 122 felony charges from August to the first of this month. We've taken numerous uh, firearms off the street. Uh, and I, I'm like her, sometimes uh, I can't sleep at night. Some of the stuff's going on here. And uh, we're trying to do everything we can. And I, I think you leaders care. I do, or I wouldn't be standing up here as the sheriff. But I agree with her, we have got to do something. Uh, I wish that you folks could see some of the things that our people are seeing every day here in Alamance County. It's, uh, it's not any fun, but we have a group of individuals that work that is uh, dedicated to try to stop some of this stuff. But we need y'all's help too. And uh, I feel just like you do, Miss Pam. I was in that restaurant. I don't think she, uh, they told the, one of the individuals come in and stole the tip jar. Yeah. The tip jar in the restaurant. Uh, you know, guaranteed to go buy their drugs. I just ask you to, to, to you know, keep in mind that these are citizens, even though they may be, some of them convicted felons, some of them drug addicts. We're working hard to get uh, uh, the major drug traffickers in this county. Uh, our ANET and our Special Operations Division took off over $1.5 million last week that left Alamance County from the cartel drug traffickers and we got it stopped up near the Airedale County line, got one right at $1.5 million. Do you know how much drugs that would be that was sold here in Alamance County? And that's the way it is. And I'm going to ask you folks, too, to tighten down our courts on some of these uh, drug traffickers. They're laughing at us. Every day they're laughing at us. And I get plum ill at it. So I'm going to have to take up Ms. Thompson this time. What she said was absolutely correct. And I know you folks care you wouldn't be sitting where you're at. But there's a decision that's going to have to be made for the future. We do not want Alamance County to be owned by a bunch of drug trafficking cartel leaders. Nope. Um, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Uh, you said tighten down the courts. Yes, sir. I'm not sure exactly. We can't do anything we about do it. Our legislators in Raleigh has set certain standards for such crimes that you can't, you can ask our DA. He can try the case as best he can, but there's only so much that the judges are allowed to do and sentencing. And when you catch a guy, I can tell you right now, we've called a guy four times for trafficking methamphetamine, and I don't think he spent more than 15 minutes in the master's office. That cashless bond you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. And that... Am I correct, then, what you're talking about doing is trying to encourage our legislative body to reverse that process absolutely okay i think we can do that i mean put I the pressure where it's needed 
We can't. And because, like I say, our judges, people blaming the sheriff's office, blaming the DA's office, and blaming the judges. But the laws are written such that, you know, if it's your first, second, or third time before you can really pull a day in jail. And these people know it. They know the law better than we do. Well, and I'm fed that, up with it. I can only say for myself, I've not supported cashless bail, so. I certainly had not either. bonds or whatever it's called, I've not supported that at all, so. I mean, I got sued and didn't have a doggone thing to do with setting bails, but, and now the, after I got sued, right. I wished I had had something to do with it because they would understand how I felt. Mr. Stevens, my understanding is that uh, the there was a lawsuit and that the uh, resident Superior Court judge and Chief District Court judge entered some kind of agreement pursuant to that lawsuit as to bond modification. That lawsuit is still pending. All right. Thank you. But, yeah, we don't have anything to do with that. No. Uh, but we have system. everything to do with manpower to where That's we true. can get him more officers, whatever it takes. That's what we do have everything to do with. That's where we're that's where we're weak. And so whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever it takes. Yeah. I'm, she's right. She's absolutely right. Our people are working their fingers to the bones, uh, catching these people, just like I uh, was talking about the Maple Avenue corridor. Uh, we worked with Burlington. Burlington made one case uh, uh, there with ANET. The rest of them was the Alamance County deputies that made the cases there. What Sheriff Johnson is talking about, uh, was it last week or week before last, uh, you had a presentation with all of the different municipalities and yes, so sir. forth, and all of the news stations were there, and I didn't see a thing on the news. I saw one thing. I did see one segment. I think it was on Fox 8, I'm not sure. Yeah, but he made, I thought it was 144 arrests. That may have included misdemeanors. No. That was misdemeanor. There was, a, 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 I can't remember the exact number, a 87 misdemeanors, 122 felony arrests, uh, charges, and uh, 47, I think it was, individuals. With the point being, the Sheriff's Department is doing a lot. We are. This problem, and we appreciate it. Well, uh, yeah, that's not in the realm of the county commissioners, uh, you're right. except supporting the sheriff's department and, and what we can do. But uh, you know, most most areas, the sheriff's office only has to work in the county. But I am the type of uh, sheriff. The people in the city pay county taxes, just like in the county. And if there's a problem that's not being addressed, or the city don't have manpower to address that problem. Certainly, I'm going to send my people in there to help where we can. But we're still fighting a losing battle at this point. Well, one comment, Mr. Chairman, if I might. There, yes. there was coverage of the Sheriff's Press Conference on ABC 45 out of Winston-Salem. So if folks wanted to go to that website, they could find that there. Uh, there's, there's also two sides to this. I mean, obviously, there's the law enforcement side for dealers, but then there's the, the recovery side for addicts. And I mean, as we mentioned today, we're breaking ground on Wednesday. A thirty thousand square foot new diversion center for mental health and substance abuse. Absolutely. That this board Thursday. Thursday, this board has taken at as one of its uh, most significant priorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miss York, the uh, the estimated timeline for completion of that, I know it's a while. Do we have a general sense of when that? Probably next fall. Yeah, next fall. Yeah. So we're doing something about it. Obviously, we're not going to solve the problem. None of us no. are going to solve the problem, but we can make a huge dent, and we've we've made efforts to do that. And, and, and I commend the, uh, and I commend the commissioners for pushing to get this diversion center open. That is going to be a plus. However, we have still got to fight the big battle with the drug the drug cartel. And I again appreciate if Via is helping make this possible with the diversion center. Um, I really, not only that, but they are attending our meetings to see what's going on in the county. Mm -hmm. We just right there see they that. are. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another another venue too, and that's what uh, Pam has been alluding to. Pam and I visited uh, Surrey County back in was it August, Pam, mm -hmm. to uh, look at the uh, recovery court. Is that what it's called? They've got the opioid response crisis team. Um, 
that's something I think we ought to take some time to consider as well. I mean, it's a problem, and we've got to deal with it. Uh, we have um, we have money that we control in the uh, in the ARP funds about four, almost fourteen million dollars. I don't think it's, we're looking at anywhere near that much money, but uh, they use the opioid settlement money mm -hmm. for that. That's right. That right. team in Surrey County in and this economic workplace. And we're using that opioid uh, drug money for the uh, diversion center, by the way. So we are using it to fight the drug problem. Well, thank you, sir. I thank y'all for what y'all y'all have done. Uh, we got a long road ahead of us, uh, but we're going to continue to fight. See what we can do. Yes, sir. I think I'm the last one up of uh, the commissioners. Just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, November the eighth, tomorrow, last day to vote. If you have not voted, I would encourage you to vote. Mr. Stevens. Nothing for me today, sir. All right. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.